because this definitely feels like a classic horror film in so many ways. Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Moon Knight, the newest in the series of Disney Plus TV shows. Now spoiler warnings for episode one, so let's get started. You have an exterior shot reminding you that we are at the workplace of Steven. Steven is one of the dual identities that Moon Knight has. So far in the TV show, we've only seen two. There are normally three, which is Mark and Steven. There is a third character in the comic books that is Jack. So that wide shot of that empty room is just to show how empty this museum is, how alone Steven really is, and as the lights are coming down, really ominous, bad things happen in the shadow, and they're just emphasizing that with these shots. So as he's getting closer, going through the doorway, you see that completely black except for the doorway itself. He is being pulled away from the museum, pulled away from reality, and into this world that he knows nothing of. Now, I love this shot. Now, I have mixed feelings about this because this shows a reflection staying put as Stephen has left us because the reflection is marked. Now, I love this because I love that they use the reflection of Stephen slash Mark as a representation of the other person. They decide to use the reflection universe as kind of how, where the other identity lives in and I think that's beautiful. The reason I have mixed feelings about this is in this shot, the reflection, which is Mark, is being reflected on again because there's another glass, so there's a reflection upon the reflection, which is fine, it's a beautiful shot, beautifully done. However, later in the video, and stay tuned for that, to see where this does not happen. So there is a little bit of a either missed opportunity or a glitch. Then you see Mark spotting the creature and you see just the slightest little indication that this is not a cat. It sounds like a cat, but it is no cat, okay? Leaving the suspense to the imagination, building up to the reveal of the monster. I like how the creature is just at the edge of frame, just enough so you know how close he is in relation to the monster, but also that he has kind of this barrier and again, building suspense so you don't see him just yet. And there you go. You can see the creature, the suspense is over, and now you just run, run for your life. I love this room, I love that it is three walls of mirrors. Just great working with the emphasis of the reflection. But in the previous shot, I mean, his head was turned and everything, he had similar expressions. And in this one, they're showing that Mark's separate from the rest of the reflections. Very beautiful scene. I love the spill of Egyptian language on the edges of this reflection. I think that's a very beautiful. I think that a lot of detail did go into this specific shot in this specific scene. I love that over the shoulder shot because it very much looks like it's two people having a conversation, but it's still his reflection. And not only are you seeing the reflection that is Mark, you're also seeing the damage that the creature is doing in order to get into that room. That suspense is real. The danger is over the shoulder of Mark. So you're seeing this and it's all lining up perfectly. It's just like a beautiful, beautiful framing of this shot and I love it. This profile is really nice because it's a head-on shot of Mark, but it's a profile of Steven, so you're not really fully seeing his reaction, but it doesn't matter his reaction because he's, he's panicking. That's all you need to know. What you really need to know is how calm and collective Mark is and how he's the one we need right now. And I saw the lights are flickering just to emphasize the suspense, emphasize that monster's gonna break in. He's gonna break in. It's gonna happen. I like when he finally looks at him, we get a pan towards Mark, again emphasizing 
that he is the hero we need. Instead of like being like, you can do this and you're the hero we need, Steven. No, 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 no. You, you stand to the side, we need more. It's like he is super saying up. I like the Egyptian symbols in the back, just ever so lightly. Giving that representation of this is all within the Egyptian myth. Then you cut away. This is a lot of what classic horror films do is that they give you enough knowledge, right? You've seen what the monster has done to the door. You see what kind of damage the monster can do. And you see him tackle Mark, not Stephen, Mark. So your imagination is filling in what it thinks it is doing. Seeing a sink being thrown just to add how much they are destroying this bathroom. Again, all leaving it to your own imagination because your imagination is stronger and more inventive than anything that they can show you on screen. Tilting up to the hero, beating up the creature and the destruction of this bathroom where you fade to black as Moon Knight is coming towards you. It's just really beautiful. But this final scene really shows you what cinematography can do. What do you guys think? Let me know down below your thoughts, your comments. If you want another video that shows you the beauty of framework, check out this Finch video that I have. If not, go ahead and check out my MCU playlist. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, you guys are awesome. Bye!